Hello guys and welcome to Program Artist. Today I will talk about database migrations. So imagine you're a developer in a team that has to develop an application for cats. It has to store and show information about cats. The database that your team uses happens to be a relational database, meaning it has a predefined schema with predefined columns and tables. Here we can see a simple server that fetches a cat information from the server. So we can see here we are using Postgres as our database. We have a connection string for that server, which is a, on localhost. And we are creating a client to connect that server. We are querying the cats. Querying cats is actually what it does is selecting everything from the cats table and shows the uh, results, okay, which prints the query results and goes for every row in the result and prints the row uh, of the that row again. And uh, after we are querying the cats, we are inserting into the cats uh, another cat named Paddington. We are querying the cats again and we are deleting the, cat, the Paddington cat from the uh, from the table, querying the cats again, and in case we have an error in one of the steps, we are logging it, and after all is done, we are closing the client for the node application to finish. So let's see what our uh, server looks like when running. So we'll compile it and run it. Okay, so after compiling and running the server, we're getting the first query results are the Mitzi, Magnum and Fluffy cats. After inserting the Paddington and querying the results, we're getting also the Paddington line. And after deleting the Paddington, we're getting again the Mitzi, Magnum and Fluffy cats. And we can see that the cats table for now only contains the name of the cat. So one day, the product manager of the product comes to your team and asks you to implement a ranking for the cuteness of the cats. And you're like, okay, no problem, we'll do it. So after thinking a little bit, you decide to add another column to the cats table with the rank of the cats. And you decide that the ranking should be from 1 to 5, or your product manager says it to you, and you decide to store a null whenever the, the value, the ranking of the cat is unknown. For example, for all the existing cats, which are uh, already in the database, the ranking is unknown. And if another cat is added without a ranking, it also should be null. But otherwise, it should be a number from 1 to 5. So now you're left to do three things. One thing is to implement a logic that fetches the rank along with all other information of the cat. Another thing is to update the uh, insertion of new cats. And the final thing that you're left to do is to manipulate the schema of the database and add the rank column to the cat's table. So in the example we see here, we, we don't need to do anything to fetch the information of the cats because we're actually fetching all of the columns we're selecting where is it we're selecting everything from cats and we're we're showing the the object as is so if we add another column it will be fetched and shown so we are we have nothing to do to fetch the cat but what we do need to do is actually to change let me close this to change the insertion of a new cat to the table and let me just do it right now We'll also add a rank and we will make it as another parameter and we will rank it as 4. Okay, imagine that this is done dynamically from some user interface, but for the sake of the example, I'm doing it hard coded in this line. So we're inserting the Paddington cat with the rank of 4. So now let's try running the code and see what happens. So, once again, let me just clear it and run it again. And what do you think will happen? We have an error, of course, because we are now having 
The first query results are as expected before, we are querying and getting already existing cats. But for the second query, which is actually inserting a new cat here, it, it tells us that the column rank of the relation cats does not exist. Why? Because we still didn't change the schema of our database. So for now, our code is broken and we need to update the schema. So the final thing that is left to do is actually to add the rank column to the cats table. We can do it by writing a script which will commit to the repository and every team member will have to remember to run the script whenever he pulls the changes from the repository and when deploying the same code to the production we'll have to remember to run this script uh, whenever we, we deploy a new version. But uh, as you can see there is actually a problem with it because many team members can update the schema, the database schema and we'll need to coordinate and remember which scripts are, uh, we have run already on the database and every database is different, like for example my database I ran scripts from 1 to 10 and uh, scripts 11 and 12 I didn't run but on production uh, the relevant scripts that are run already are 1 to 6 and scripts 7 to 12 didn't run on them so we need to have somehow manage the scripts that need to be run on that database and it, it can be quite difficult to, to remember and to make sure that everyone runs the scripts on the rele relevant databases. Also, if for example a new team member joins your team and you need to set up a new database for him to work, uh, it will be hard because you need to, to create a dump from your database and uh, your database might be in a state of a manipulated state, like for example you've added a new table or new columns for development which are temporary or you, you're not sure these are the tables that will stay. You need to roll back the changes, dump your database, create a new database for the new developer and so on, which can be difficult. So it seems to be very complicated to add this new column to the table, but there is quite a simple solution to do it which are the migration tools for the database. There are a lot of tools for this job and every language has its own tool. I've worked with Flyway for Java, Fluent Migration for C Sharp and uh, Next for Node and I'm sure there are many many more tools for different languages like I don't know Python and uh, inside the Java and Node there are many migration tools available besides the one that I mentioned. So every tool has its own different API, different capabilities. You just need to look it up and see what tool is more useful to you with your needs. Whichever tool you're picking, they are all basically work the same way. They work by comparing a folder which contains scripts, migration scripts, with a table inside the database that, they, that the tool manages and it compares the table, the content of the table with the scripts, the migration scripts and if it, there is a script in the folder that haven't been run it doesn't appear in the migrations table and if it sees that kind of script or multiple scripts uh, the migration tool runs them, the, runs the migrations and updates the migration table to contain a new line for that script that already uh, that it now ran. Uh, so this way it tracks for you for the migrations for that specific database that should run while looking at the migrations directory inside your uh, directory of your project. So let's just look at an example by using next so you will see it more clearly. So let's start by installing the next. Okay, so let me again just clear it. And let's npm install dash dash save next. So it installs next now. Yeah, installed next. And another thing, because we are using TypeScript, let me install the types for next. Okay, and after doing this, we have next. So now let's use next. 
So the first thing that we need to do is to import next. And the way that next works is that it exports a, an initialization function. Okay, I will call it initialize next uh, to initialize the next itself. The next thing that we want to do is initialize the next client itself. Okay, so let me just do it also. I prepared it in advance. Okay, so what we're doing, we're calling the initialize next function and telling it that our database client is Postgres. We're giving the same connection string to the database and we're telling that our migration will use the table migrations, which doesn't exist in the database, and that our migrations will sit inside the DB migrations folder. The next thing that we want to do is actually we want to wrap all our code in, in a function that makes a migration and after the migration is done we want to run our code. So in order to do it we will do next migrate to latest and after it is done, after the migration is done, this promise is resolved. Okay, and all our code will run after the migration. So again, as our server starts, we run the migration. As it finishes, we run the rest of the code. And in the end, we will destroy the next client as well for our node server to exit. Okay, if you don't want to exit, you, need, you don't need to do it. So let's look at the code and the output of our server after doing this. And what will happen is no such file or directory, blah, 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 DB migration. It tells us that we haven't created any migrations yet and we don't even have the migrations table. The migration, uh, not table, the migrations folder. So let's create it. Let's copy paste it. Copy. Let's create a new folder. Let's call it DB migrations and it is not in the correct place. Where is it? DB migrations should be in the root. Yeah, DB migrations. And if we do it again, Okay, so now it will succeed, but we still have an error because we haven't added any migration to migrate the schema. So this is what we're gonna do next. So now we're gonna add a migration to migrate and add a new column to the cats table. So the way that next works, it expects to see files with uh, specific names the names are the it, it is starting with the year and then the month and then the date so the date and then the hour and then the time that this migration was created you can simply put any string there but this is what it looks for in order to to sort the migrations properly and then an underscore and a name of the migration so we'll create a migration called add cat ranks and it has to be a javascript file let me just close it here and here okay and the content of this file will be like this okay the content should export two functions an up function and a down function up function is a function that runs the migration forward and I haven't created down function but let me just do it ultra table cats drop column rank okay so an up migration what it does it runs a script a JavaScript, a, an SQL script that alters the cats table and adds a new rank column which is an integer and when migrating down meaning doing a rollback migration it alters the table cats and drops the rank column now 
I'm choosing to do it with raw SQL, but there is actually another API that Next uses that it's more JavaScripty, and you can add and alter tables and uh, alter columns in the JavaScript. I'm I'm preferring to do it with raw because most of people know SQL and it is much easier to learn and understand what happens here simply by looking at a raw SQL. So after doing this, let me clear again and let me run the script again. And what will happen is the migration will run. After the migration is run, we now have a rank column. <clears throat> and what happens now is the first query for the cats is now returning null for all, for all the existing cats because we didn't put any ranks there. After inserting the Paddington cat with the rank of 4, it now has a rank of 4 and the other cats do not have a rank of 4. And after deleting the Paddington cat, we still have the same cats again without any ranks. So as you can see, the migration tool ran the script and what is great now is that when I commit this and push it to the to the repository, everyone who pulls the changes will now will now have this migration. And when he runs the server without even remembering it, he will now have the changes to the schema done automatically. And its server will run also with an updated code and also with the updated database. Now, one thing you do need to think about is. When you're adding a migration tool for the first time, you already probably have a database, which means that if you're creating a new clean database and you want to create the database from scratch, you will need to add a first migration with the dump of your existing database, but you want to do it smart and to make sure that this migration will be able to run on an existing database with existing tables and not like for example drop tables and lose the data because when you run it on the production for the first time you will want to make sure that this first migration is run and doesn't destroy your data another thing that you uh, can do is actually create this dump migration this first migration that creates the database uh, as it is now uh, in this state, the first state, and create manually inside the production database uh, a migration table with a single line that specifies that the migration, the initial migration has already been run. So when the migration tool compares the folder content and the migration table, it will know that the first initialization migration already has been run and it doesn't need to do anything regarding this migration. So it is a small thing that you need to pay attention if you don't want to lose your data and if you want to be able to build your database from scratch from clean database. You have watched an episode about database migrations. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more programming tips videos by clicking over here or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more coordinated videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Program Artist.